All right, guys, welcome. Oh, where'd Erin go? <laughs> she disappeared. Bit of a delay. Oh no, Erin. And we're still looking for Amy to join us. But hello. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna get started. So uh, we're here today <laughs> to talk about developing a cosplay. Um, so we're here to casually chat about cosplay. Um, we have a bunch of different uh, cosplayers um, as our panelists. Uh, we all sort of have different styles and stuff like that. Um, so we have. Uh, Trish or Captain Pira, we have Aaron Chibileni, we have uh, Jen Slothcore um, cosplay, and then there's me, which is Dark the Dance Boy cosplay. Um, and so we're going to talk through one of our costumes and just how we did it and sort of our thought process on how to make them um, and answering questions in the Twitch. So if you have any questions, fire them away and we will answer them um, to the best of our ability okay um who wants to go first <laughs> in the email chain Aaron looked very prepared so i thought it was okay. going to be you <laughs> but i can go if you don't want to Aaron, you're muted we can't hear you okay okay trish i guess you're going first okay um <laughs> So the one I'm breaking down is Lin Setsua from like an anime or like people call it puppet anime, Thunderbolt Fantasy, because they're basically like these ball jointed doll characters that have been puppeted around. And the thing about that is it's live action. So it uses, I mean, live action, they're puppets, but like it uses real materials. So I don't have as much wiggle room as you normally would with an anime or a video game because it's like, clearly this is brocade and it's not only brocade, it's a very specific brocade. So a lot of it came down to like searching fabric stores and the internet to find like silver with dragons in particular. Can't just be silver brocade, has to have dragons because otherwise I have to paint on some dragons and I don't feel like painting on some dragons. But the main appeal of this build is painting on the kimono kind of pieces. So for that, I was doing silk painting, which is something I haven't done before. It's on the skirts as well. If you don't feel like getting your hands dirty, you could like make a pattern and do a spoon flower print. I think at the time I thought it would be cheaper. I don't think it was in the end. So you might want to budget things out carefully before you do things. Um, so to start with something like that, I would make vectors of my pattern that's not showing up, but it's basically just like the snowflake pieces that are around here and the big rectangle splotchy guys on here that are in a very specific, not quite geometric pattern, just to make things fun. Um, and for silk painting, you have to tie up your silk into like a big flat panel, but you can't let it touch the ground. You can't have it just like touching a surface because then the, the ink bakes paints will bleed and you don't want that. So I ended up making a frame out of four of these PVC pipes and these little copper joints. And I cut it to about the size I would want my maximum skirt panel. And then like made these fabric tubes and then I could stitch it, the panels in place along it. And then for the painting, or, okay, before you paint, you have to use this thing called Gouda. This is like an easy to use version that comes already in a tube and you kind of apply oh, yeah. it like fabric paint and you do your outlines of where you want your colors to be. And then it works, it's like a resistance. So your dye will bleed, but it will only bleed up to the line of Gouda. So that way you can do th things like these snowflakes where like this is white, so this is the base silk. And then this is like one layer of wash. I ended up diluting my dye with water, which is why it's a little splotchy. They sell like actual diluters that will make it 
a lot more even. And then you just kind of paint around and then the beauty of this is it will bleed right up to the edge so you don't actually have to get that close. If you do go close you get the chance of like having a run like that. Um, so researching specific skills you need to learn is a really important thing. Um, looking up Pinterest on how to make different shapes. This is pretty easy. It is mostly just like a panel, a bunch of rectangles. It needed to be lined because when his skirt flips up, it's got the red brocade and he does a lot of like action stuff. So it's important that you see the inside. He's also got on his shoulders as well as his hips these like scaly petals. So that was just cutting out like a million of these scale shapes, surging the edges. Um, this isn't my favorite method, but he has a defined pattern on the edges, so I thought surging would work. And then just applying them in slightly overlapping rows. Um, I don't know, like I could get really in depth into this, but I don't want to take other people's time, so. <laughs> You, you still have like another five minutes if you want to sit and explain a little bit longer if there's something that you want to say. Also, uh, welcome, Amy. Um, Kiera Cosplay, uh, she popped in a little late because we had a, a mix up with the Google codes. Oh no. So. The wig is cool though. It's entirely my fault. I'm stupid. Hello. <laughs> They're hard. You're not stupid. Glad you made it. Yeah. Okay, so um, other stuff. There's like how the clothing is worn sometimes doesn't make sense because it's art. It's not real. I mean, this is more real than other things, but still like initially it seemed like he had a vest over kind of a kimono. But if you look at it, the sleeves were actually separate and he has like a full set of clothing underneath it. So I had to make all that. The sleeves are actually joined to this like hooded cape monstrosity. <laughs> And it doesn't, it's actually like weighted enough at the front that it doesn't need anything else to keep it on, which is fortunate. But he's got like a big giant cape. He's also got this giant side fluff, which like fake fur is expensive. So if you don't take that into your initial like budgeting, it can be a lot. It's got all these little flippy straps and because again, it's like a puppet, you can see that he's got these actual like metal joiny bits. So that's another thing where like, I have to specifically go out and source that. I can't just kind of make it up. I mean, I guess I could have made it out of Warbla, but that would take a million years and probably be as expensive. And then I made this during the pandemic. So I couldn't do a lot of like errands places like I normally would. So things like the buckles, I would normally go down to Leather Supply Depot in Toronto because they have an assortment and I just like go as many times as it took to find appropriately giant decorative buckles. So instead I had to like model and 3D print them. So that's also like going to take a lot longer than just buying a buckle somewhere. I thought I could bring it closer, but it is coming with me. But if you are making your own things, then you have kind of unlimited options as to what they look like. So what do you use to model um, your stuff? Okay. When um, you're doing 3D printing. I think I normally use Fusion, but sometimes I use Blender, depending on how organic this is. Okay, Autodesk Fusion 360, it has a mode that is um, free if for like a number of uses. So you can have, I think, 10 projects open at a time, as long as it's for non-commercial use. It's free, but every year you have to renew your license to like tell them you're still not making money off of this. And that's more, um, that's more precise measurements and stuff, whereas Blender is a lot better for more organic things. Excellent. And oh. I can't really show my screen, so I can't really show you it. But, <laughs> uh. but yeah, if someone else wants to. Okay, well, thank you very much, Trish. <laughs> thank Yay. you. Yay! All right, uh, who's who wants to go next?
Hey, Jen, you went up on screen, so how about you? Jenny? <laughs> okay, all right. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, so the angle I decided to discuss today, because um, I both build costumes and I sort of thrift costumes for things that are uh, more everyday clothing based, is one of the uh, sort of thrifted and upcycled style costume. So I'm going to talk about my Android 18 that I'm wearing today. Um, so um, I guess I'll start with, uh, I don't know how would I start. <laughs> yes. uh, looking at a costume and saying, do, yeah, do I need to make these uh, garments or can I purchase these garments? Because I know there are cosplayers who will make absolutely everything. I will make things that need to be specific, that need to be custom, but if it's something that I can buy, I will go out and buy it. Uh, I don't have that kind of time <laughs> to make absolutely everything. So um, this entire outfit is either things that were already in my closet or that I got from a thrift store or in one very specific case uh, from the clearance rack of a store at the mall. So it's a matter of uh, breaking down the costume, looking at all the different elements and making a list of say, okay, so for Android 18, I need a black undershirt with white and black striped sleeves. I need a denim vest, I need a denim skirt, I need black leggings, I need brown boots, and I need the wig. And that's, that's it, okay, those are all clothes that I can uh, easily uh, adapt or purchase, so. That's what I did. So, like, uh, vest is thrifted. It does not close in the front because this is a, like, boys extra large. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the biggest problem with that is is tiny sleeves. But when you chop the sleeves off of your thrifted jacket, not so much of a problem. <laughs> uh, finding the specific shirt was a bit of an issue. Uh, so I found just a black t-shirt at the thrift store, could not find anything stripey to use for the sleeves. Even Fabricland had nothing appropriate that I could just buy to make the sleeves. But I did find sort of a long t-shirt at, I don't know, Forever 21 or something in the clearance section. So it was just long enough that I could get the length of the sleeve out of the length of the shirt. So I chopped that one up, <laughs> stitched it in here. And then the skirt was again thrifted. There we go. I needed to shorten it. It doesn't quite match the denim of the top, but that's okay. Sometimes the costume's not gonna match and sometimes that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like leggings and the boots I used from a costume I already have. And this wig I got, uh, super budget friendly lace front uh, wig, which does not fit very well. And I was going to use for Captain Marvel, uh, but styled like this and with the hair down in the front, I think it looks wonderful. And I think it's been a great repurpose for it. Yeah, it's great. Sorry. I love the costume. It's awesome. Okay, need to move oh, thank you. Oh, I did. I did custom paint and attach my little, oops. Oh, oh, oh no. no camera down. Uh, a red ribbon uh, army logo on the back, just because I can't make anything too easy. As they <laughs> stenciled and painted letters, and I stitched onto a just a little felt logo on there. Let's see. Any other details? I did chop up the edges of the sleeves. Not that you can tell, but. <laughs> There we go. I think that's that's basically the whole process of this costume because it doesn't always have to be a big gown that takes two years to sew and still isn't finished. <laughs> Single tier. <laughs> okay. All right. Any questions? Yes, man pans. Anyone can cosplay. Anyone can cosplay. You can put together a costume for anything. 
again, not every costume has to be competition master level, and <laughs> it's about having fun. Oh, I mean, also the fact that you can do thrifted cosplay. It doesn't matter if you didn't make it. If you bought it at a store, it's still cosplay. You can mix and match. You can be like, I only want to style wigs, so I'm going to buy everything else. Like, just do the parts you like. Exactly. Did you want to go there? I have a cat. Oh. I have a cat issue, so I have to sneak away for two moments. Okay. The cat that <laughs> likes to eat my craft foam is in the craft Ooh. room, which is not good. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Aaron, do you want to go next then? Sure, sure. I apologize for the whistling. It's blizzarding again. So. I wondered if that was your microphone. Yeah, that's why I muted myself. I was like, uh. um, anyway, <laughs> it is. It's because I'm a druid, question mark. Um, the costume I was going to break down was my Keyleth costume from Campaign 1 of Critical Role, which is sort of a little bit of a weird mystery because Campaign 1 didn't really have a lot of official artwork. And when people think cosplay, they think, oh, very specific design whereas we just have like written not even written word it's all audio it's all imagination so it kind of threw a bit of a wrench because normally i do what ben does i look at a costume and i break it down piece by piece by piece and sometimes i make a checklist because visually that's what i do um so in this case i just kind of pick two things that were really obvious in the description of the character, which is um, her cloak, which I have here, which is lovely and I love it, uh, which is described as being this beautiful cape of gradiated leaves from green to fall and it just beautiful. And the other, which I don't have with me right now because my grandfather is fixing them, is the base for the antlers, <laughs> um, which are attached to the wig that I wear for that. Um, so I've learned over the years of cosplay that when you are making capes, a really big important part of capes is you need to figure out how you're attaching them so they don't fold parts of your costume over, they don't strangle you to death um, if they're like really <laughs> heavy. Like my Raven Queen cape is so heavy there are actual hidden straps to a belt around my waist so it just really takes the weight off. So for this one, um, it is, hold on, bring it over here. Um, it is lined, it, this was my quarantine project when I thought we'd only be two weeks. Um, <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, so it's it's out of stash fabric um, and I'd already bought the leaves pre-pandemic. So to keep it light, the rows of leaves, I cannot see, are stitched onto brown sheer fabric that I may have got at a fabric swap once upon a time. Um, and then just cotton because that's what I had. Um, but that in itself took the weight off of um, most of it and it's an off the shoulder cloak. So to keep it from folding over like this, they're actually magnets in the back of the cape and in the back of the corset. Um, and if I have to move it, I can move the magnets in the cape easy, but it's also attached with hooks on the front of the corset, which you can't really see because I did a very bad job. So just clip on or clip off and then Clip what on. kind of magnets did you use? Um, I used earth magnets, and I have some here because I always have them. Um, so they're that you size. can buy like a hundred of these off of Amazon for like super cheap, <laughs> the tiny ones. Okay, yeah, how do you sew them without them getting your hand. needle to like being drawn to the magnet too hard? Because I've tried um, drive magnets before, and they're a little <laughs> extreme, and they kind of steal my. I have um, antique bone needles <laughs> um, from my grandmother <laughs> that I was actually using for the magnets. Smart. Um, I only used the big ones because it's just what I had. Um, I would not actually recommend them this big um, because they're dangerous. Get the I'm, <laughs> and just yeah, I'm actually, of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually terrified of earth magnets. So the fact that I used them was like, oh. 
Um, I originally got them that big because I was going to use them for the, the antlers initially. And then when I put them on the antlers, the antlers kind of spun on my head. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the antlers, which I wish I had here, um, they're real antlers, but they're, we found them. They're what you call shed antlers um, because deer naturally shed their antlers. And we happened to find a pair of them. Um, so they've been tapped and drilled. So I can actually thread them onto bolts. And it, in the wig originally, I just sewed uh, two pieces of leather because it's sturdy to the underside of the wig. So I'd have two little Frankenstein bolts like this, and then you screw the antlers on. Um, I've since changed that to a warbler headpiece that kind of goes on like a skull cap, sort of, like a strappy skull cap. Um, just because it kept the antlers from tilting backwards, because they are heavy. Um, yeah. but, they, but, but not as heavy as resin antlers. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that one anyway. I'm working on another version of Keyleth right now. <laughs> I'm crazy. Um, but yeah, other, if it was something that had art, I would definitely track down as much reference art as I can and just like break it down. Um, and I don't draft anything, so it would go from uh, picture references to, okay, what does this look like in a commercial pattern? Mm -hmm because I'm lazy. Oh. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amy, are you done, Erin? Yeah. I don't want to cut you off. I'm good, if you can still hear me. Just... Yes. Yeah, we can still hear you. My oh. screen went black, so I was oh, like, no. I don't know what happened. No, we're still um, I, I will turn my microphone off, though, so you don't keep hearing the whistling wind. <laughs> It's it, atmospheric. I know. It sounds like we're actually at Kanji in the middle of winter because it's a blizzard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll take a picture at my window and send it to you on Discord because it's terrifying. All right. Amy, you're up. If you want to start talking okay. so I can pin you. There you are. Yeah. So when I'm developing a cosplay, I guess... Um, I, I tend to go for characters with simple designs, but that have like one or two elements that are kind of ridiculous. Like the one I'm wearing right now, Flannery. The costume is thrifted. This is like a cut up shirt and a cut up shirt. But like the wig, I was like, I want to try to do that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it wouldn't pass weapons check. It's, um, it's full <laughs> of really pointy wires that really can take people's eyes out. Um, yeah, if I were to redo it, I would at least um, I would at least like file off the pointy ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was going to talk about my um, Ben Zaiten costume, which nobody knows who she is. So I printed out a picture. Um, Cute. So yeah, like pretty simple design, but like I wanted to like figure out how to defy gravity and make a shirt out of a scarf that kind of floats. Um, here's a picture of me wearing said costume since I'm not wearing it right now. And it's kind of hard to tell what this shirt looks like when I just hold it up. So I'm just going to hold it up for you here now. This is... Yeah, because of anime. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was sitting in a room in like my hotel room for Kanji and nobody knew what it was until I put it on. And they were like, oh my god, it's a shirt! <laughs> yeah, it's a shirt. Um, and it, yeah, it defies gravity. This is the second iteration of this shirt. Um, well, version 2.2 .2 because 2.1 broke literally as I stepped off of stage of the masquerade at Kanji 2012. Um, I mean, at least it waited. Yeah, at least that was very waited. nice of it. <laughs> very nice of it. Um, so yeah, the first the first version I used I used armature wire, but it wasn't strong enough, so it did not defy gravity the way this one does. Um, and the fabric was the wrong color, so I wanted to redo it anyway. I wanted like a really light blue, but like almost white. Um, the other one was way too blue. It was just kind of a disaster. And the fabric was too heavy. So this is like, so I started with just one wire and that didn't work. That wasn't enough. So it has two mm -hmm. wires and then the two wires, they kept sliding together and I didn't want another sewing line in there. So what I have in between the two lines is, um, it's all double-sided interfacing ironed on. Mm -hmm. 
to make the the channels for the two wires so they don't cross into the middle of the scarf and then it's built it's built on just i just bought a cheap bra so it's just built on a cheap <laughs> bra and it clasps in the middle so i have to undo the chain i have to undo the chain in the middle to put it on and then i don't know how well you can see them this fishing line that mm. actually holds it together <laughs> so this is this is what broke after the masquerade at kanji i had a clear just a bra clip on the front mm. and it snapped I, t I got off stage and I took a huge sigh of relief and it snapped. <laughs> so <laughs> the fishing line has so far held. I've worn this a couple times for a couple of photo shoots and it just, so the fishing line just clips onto like a dress. I don't know if not well you can see it. It just hooks onto a, a dress hook, that dress hook right there. Cool. And yeah, the front just came apart. The, the, <laughs> the chain part comes apart really easily because I have to put it on and off while the costume is on, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And then, yeah, the bottom, the bottom is just more the same. It's just the two wires with the dual sided interfacing in between. The wire stops, actually the wire, the wire on the bottom stops at the back because I didn't need it. And what it kind of wire did you use, Amy? Um, so it's an armature wire, but it's, um, it's, I don't remember what the, um, the weight of it is. Um, I had to bump it up. So I had, um, I don't know what the gauge is. I think it's, I think it's gauge four. I don't remember exactly what gauges mean. Um, but basically I just, I, I found one that felt like it was sturdy enough <laughs> and went with that. Um, so yeah, it is actually like a, a sturdy wire from the hardware store. It's not Initially, I was using the cheap one from the dollar store. Don't. Yes, that's what I use every time. It's never enough. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it can be. It can be if you take like multiple pieces and you twist them together, which was not an option for this shirt because it uh, that was too much weight. Um, yeah. Like this, this wig is a bunch of just dollar store wires are twisted together to make it sturdier. Um, but yeah, it didn't. It wasn't going to work for the shirt. Yeah, and then some other things that I had to do for this cosplay. Um, it's hard to see on, you can kind of see it on, on this picture. So her eyebrows, she has no eyebrows. She has like the, the demon eyebrows. So I had to go on a fun adventure to like a cause, uh, like a, a theater store to find eyebrow wax. Ooh. Cause I didn't want to shake my eyebrows. Cause that sounds weird. That was, I was I, <laughs> no, that's a word the next. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's just, it's this really like, you have to work with it in your hands for a little bit. It's kind of sticky. Um, and then you just kind of put it on your eyebrows and then you have to use like grease paint over top of it. It's it's sort of meant for clowns. That's what I learned when I was um, on this journey of how to figure, figuring out how to get rid of my eyebrows. Um, so yeah, it's made out of, it's, it's, it's called, it's literally called eyebrow plastic. And it has, it comes with its own fancy sealer. It's like okay. eyebrow wax sealer. Um, and yeah, and then you have to use like actual like grease paint on top of it um, to, cause like normal foundation isn't thick enough to, to cover it up. <laughs> Cosplayers moving in on the clown market. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's its main use. What I, what I was told when I went to go and get it, I don't know. I don't really know what else you would use eyebrow wax for. Great creams, although a lot of them use glue sticks. Yeah, yeah, but like, I don't know. I don't know how how much a drag queen has to actually make their eyebrows totally disappear and look like skin. Um, and then yeah, and then I just did like a mascara and eyeliner to do the the her black eyebrow patches. And then the other other fun thing that I did for this costume was I hand dyed fur for the first time. Ooh. This is this is kind of more of a of a dart Lindsay thing because <laughs> she's the one who she's the one who taught me how to do this when I was doing it. So this is the wig and the ears and her tail as well. But I'm redoing her tail as a brushed yarn tail. You can ask questions about that if you want. I don't have it done. I'm I don't even have the yarn for it, but I've done a few. So the the fur is hand dyed with acrylic paints to be the right color of the as the wig. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, it works really well to to, to use acrylic paints if you just need to do a small section of um, fur and you can't find um, a source of the color that you need. Um, Which in cosplay, often you can't find the color that you need. (laughs) Or if you need like custom stripes. Yep. Like I did. You can sort of see them in the background there, that yellow and red. That's my custom um, Gatomon paws for a costume I'm working on. It's not done yet. It's actually Neferdimon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, it's, a, it's a custom fur dye to get the red and red and yellow stripes, because who carries that? And who wants to... Well, I mean, you can cut into the fur and then put in and the so fur the, and the, so the stripes together. And, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of work that I've done once and then immediately regretted my life choices. Yeah. <laughs> I did it for the fawn legs. I was working on just the spots and I was like, I'm too afraid to cut this. So I just ended up sewing the spots on over top and I'm like, it'll be a little puffy. It'll be okay. Yeah. If you, if you wanted, if you don't, if you're too scared to cut it, what you can do is you can shave the fur. Like you can cut just the fur off. Don't cut the fabric, but cut the fur off and then stick the patch on over top. Well, that's a good idea too. Yeah, when that's I what I was when um, I dyed Tiger, uh, so Tiger the Wind, he was a big blue and white uh, wolf creature, and I couldn't find a gradient between the nice blue fabric or fur that I found and the white fabric, so I had to dye the middle fabric. So I had to mix paint to try to match in between the two. Um, and then, yeah, the bathtub looks awful <laughs> when you're doing the process. <laughs> yeah, if you're doing, like, even, even like, doing a small amount, like, my, my Gatomon paws, it looked like someone was murdered in my bathtub <laughs> because of all the, like, <laughs> red splotches of paint. <laughs> That's always a fun thing. Is it a cosplayer or a murder scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or right. oh, did uh, a bomb explode in this room? <laughs> oh, bombs always explode. That's just a thing that happens. Um, is that everything that you wanted to say there, Amy? I mean, sort of. But- I also have, you know, other, like, all the, like, random custom rings that I... Oh, okay, hold on. Character. I forgot about your random custom <laughs> rings. Okay, show your random custom <laughs> rings. So this character has eight unique rings. <laughs> and I had to find reference pictures... And they all have they all have which finger they go on written on the back <laughs> because they're all different, and I always forget which order they go in. But yeah, there's 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 eight of them. There's eight of them. They're all different, and I had to find reference pictures of all of them. One of them I couldn't find a reference picture. This one, so I just copied one of the ornaments from her hair. But yeah, key the key was like I etched which finger, you probably can't see it. I etched which finger each one goes in on the back. <laughs> this one's L1. That's, my That's left, a good plan. Left first finger. <laughs> That's such a good idea. So, and so how did you cast them, Amy? Um, these are actually sculpted with paper clay. Each of okay. them is sculpted with paper clay. And they're just on a, a wire. And the paper clay is holding them to the wire. It's It's... It's not the best. Like you wouldn't want to wear them all the time, but it works. That's like cosplay. And they're they have to go. They have, she has fingerless gloves. They have to go over fingerless gloves. The wire's nice because it makes them like adjustable, so I can make them more loose mm. to get them over the gloves and then tighten them once they're on my fingers. Yes. Okay. What are they doing looking in my tub in the first place? Um, sometimes, people, <laughs> sometimes people have to shower. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes they need the bathroom. It's just right there. What else are they going to look Also, at? there's some spiders that live in there, and they were very worried. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Was that was that it now, Amy? Sorry, I've forgotten the three I things. I think so. That... I think okay. so. I can't. And unfortunately, I um, repurposed the skirt of that costume into a Love Live costume, so I can't actually <laughs> show anything else from the costume, really. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to take over for a touch, um, and I'm going to talk about uh, some creature costumes. Um, 
So I'm going to talk about um, my Amalfia, which is the last unicorn, um, and she is here. And obviously I'm not in it because I would not um, fit <laughs> in anything uh, resembling doing this uh, online. Um, so with a lot of the creature costumes, like any, any kind of ones, I'll redline the costume. So I'll take a picture of me standing or whatever position I'm probably most likely going to be in the costume. And I'll print it out and I'll draw on it or draw on, on Photoshop and just see where I need to make parts of me exist that don't actually exist. So um, in the unicorn's case, obviously I need longer legs. So I made PVC stilts. Um, I had done wood stilts uh, at a quad suit before. And I kind of wanted to see what PVC was about because I had looked online different resources and PVC pipe was sort of what more people had used. The only downside I found with that is that um, I have really big forearms apparently for most people who do PVC pipe uh, stilts. So my arms, it's not as comfortable as uh, Tiger's stilts. Um, and then I had to figure out some way to make my neck extend so much further off of my shoulders and I didn't want the head sitting on my head because of how big the neck and head was I figured that would be too much strain on my neck so I actually have a PVC pipe that I bent um, using a heat gun that sits over top of my head and hangs like this so oh. I just took up my husband sorry Dave <laughs> So this is how big her neck is. My head is down here. So it sits, uh, I'm, <laughs> I can't really stand super well inside with it on, um, as we discovered, which would be something I would change if I was to ever do this costume again. Um, as well as I had planned to make her um, almost like a puppet up top so that she can move her ears just with uh, rigging up. Um, oh, I can't get the, where's your neck? Yeah, her head moves too, but <laughs> and now I'm caught on it. I was like, yeah, so I sort of looked at what I wanted to do with it. Um, I decided not to go with fur because that was gonna cost way too much to do her entirely in fur. Um, so I do different parts of her in fur and then her mane is all yarn because um, again it was uh, cheaper than doing that many wigs and if I screwed up I could just cut out a section um, and then as you can get brush brush tail wigs and stuff like that uh, her tail is actually the little poof on the end of her tail is brushed out um, yarn to give it that fur kind of thing but that's sort of what my process was and then also uh, trialing and erroring uh, the suit like there were lots of times that I would put it on and walk around make sure that I could still walk around um, and fill it in with foam and things like that so um, so now are people in the chat do you have any questions for our amazing cosplayers thank you very much everyone for sharing your costumes I'm just gonna pin me so that we're all here you can see it right here. <laughs> oh yeah, that was your quad suit. Yeah, so mine's a little different because I had stilts on my back feet. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is the head piece. And when I wear it, I can only see the floor because my facing downwards through this like mesh. Unfortunately, I need to replace all the batteries for the fans, and the eyes do light up. I think the I think the battery's dead though. Let's see if I can find the switch for them. Oh my gosh! I give you bonus points for like responsible quad suiting with ah, fans. I, <laughs> I was like, I am bad. I have not put any fans in any of my costumes because um, I am a crazy person. Yes, I have two. Well, on the upside, like I've seen how fast you can get in and out of them, so like you can at least take breaks. <laughs> That's true. Uh, actually, yeah, this it, one's kind of hard to get in and out of. So this is sort of a, a, a segue in terms of um, safety in your costume, which is something <laughs> that we 
sometimes forget when we're in the moment of building a costume, we're like, this is going to be so amazing. And I'm going to put this layer on top of this layer on top of this layer. And then you don't think about what if I have to use a washroom or what if there's an emergency, and I have to get out of this costume very fast. Um, when I'm pretty sure that Caitlin's probably uh, in the chat somewhere. Uh, Caitlin, when we built our you raptors. You can't actually see the thing because it's underneath the head. Oh. Um, underneath the headpiece. Caitlin, when we built the Raptors, it does not have fans, but we had put vents in underneath the arms and uh, our wrists were open so that we could sort of try to get as much air as possible. And the face was quite open. Um, and she's like, oh yeah, I can't be, I can't overheat because of a metal condition. Oh, you can overheat. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that changes things a little bit. So we had to um, rework her chest plate and we actually cut holes in and shoved ice filled water bottles um, to go against her chest to keep the temperature down in those costumes because we wore them the first time at Fan Expo. Um, one of the years that they so had a higher fire code and locked everyone out of the building and we were stuck uh -huh. outside in the sun. So we were really thankful that we had put those ice balls you were, in them. You were also in the masquerade that year too. Yes. And oh. Yeah, no, we, we literally got, we signed up for the masquerade, walked out, got lunch, came back, waited in line for two hours to get back in to participate in the masquerade. It was uh, yeah. not a fun year. I remember that year we were sending runners out for contestants because it was like, what do you do? <laughs> Yeah, bathroom and cosplays. It's it it is something that you don't always think about when you're making costumes, but it's very important to think about or go, okay, well maybe I'll just have someone in the bathroom with me and help hold this great big ginormous thing. Or maybe I'll plan I mean, ahead and not like eat that morning <laughs> and then oh hold God. it for six hours and then just you're done forever. I mean, I forget to eat at puns anyway. <laughs> um I actually find I'm way better at remembering to accommodate people's disabilities or like bathroom abilities when I'm making it for say Chloe uh, as opposed to myself because I don't know why it just instantly I'm like oh Chloe well, has all of these your friends but you're like I, I <laughs> suffer from my art <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> so this is so you can see the fan on the back of this one oh. so there's a fan in the back the hard drive fan um, yeah, it's just a hard drive, <laughs> um, and it's it sits right in front of the tail. And I oh, you had a butt fan? In... Yeah, the butt fan. <laughs> Man, so I want a butt fan. In... You can't. <laughs> I don't know if you know where it is. So I actually went in and I cut. So we were talking before about you can like cut the the down to the fur. So there's a few spots in the actual fur where I cut holes in the fur to actually allow the air to pass through and i can't i can't find them i can't find them fur hides everything fur is great you did a real good job fur yeah. is a very very forgiving median to so i with. can drag mine out it's in the next room over i'll return oh but yeah this is my big furry monster that i don't have anywhere for her to live she just kind of sits on the floor oh yeah, um, Amalthea lives in a in a box. I don't even have a box. I should I should probably get a box. <laughs> then I could at least put other things on top of it or use it as like a work surface. I don't have a quad suit or anything, but I have. Uh, I just kind of threw everything in the bucket to clean off my work table. It's a cape. So, how do you guys store your costumes? Just a curious. lot of these buckets. <laughs> yeah, Usually yeah. not and this size. Big, big plastic bins. I have like, we have tiny closets in the house, so they're really useless for most things. So I keep the cosplays in the tiny closets and then the excess go in these buckets under the bed. <laughs> a lot of mine are in the drawers the just right back here. All the ones that can fold and all the small props are in this unit back here. All my wigs are in this unit here. It's like a, an Ikea unit. And oh, then I have- Since I just moved, I think I've got and a couple I have, of I, I, here. We just moved and I have a nice. whole, I have a whole closet over there where most of my cosplays live. But as you can see, some of them don't fit and some of the larger props just sit on the floor. Yeah, a lot of my big props are in the living room. 
But you mentioned wigs, and yes. I found a good storage solution for wigs, and that is like. This shelf is meant for shoes, so it's got like a lot of individual compartments and stuff, and it fits like two or three bags of wigs, depending on. I have a lot of wigs that can't actually be stored, so they just sit on that shelf. Like this yeah, one I have... can't be stored. What is the Both cosplay can't be Yes, I have those ones too. I'm super impressed with how organized that looks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mine are in just. If it can go in, like, a vacuum seal bag, it goes in a vacuum seal bag and just shoved in, like, my closet. I mean, that's probably a better use of space. <laughs> just, just buy a second the costumes that the cost... Yes. Yeah, the yeah. costumes yeah. that I, like, wear a lot, so, like, Keyleth or my Castle Blood stuff, they each have their own little box. Nice. And then if they're all in the same box, you can find all the pieces, because the horse is like, I was storing them in the closet, and it's like, you can't put the props in the closet, and the shoes gotta go somewhere else, and the wig is somewhere else, and it's like, oh, I can, like, just throw on, like, Nami, she's really simple and quick. And it's like, oh, I don't know where her shoes are. Her wig is one of these, like, 200 wigs in the shoe <laughs> compartment. I have to go through every single red one and hope. Yeah, that I, is exactly I, why, even though it's, like, a waste together, of... But it never works. Yeah, it's a waste of space for me to, like, have each one in its own box, but I can grab the box and it's all there. I try, when I when I put them in my closet, when I hang them in my closet, I try to at least have all the pieces that can go on a hanger on the same hanger. Yeah. Yeah. I started like filling bags things. with props and like hate putting the bag on the hanger or like- Oh, you file stuff away? Things. Oh, you have a filing? So... I have oh, a book way to work so all of the pieces of each costume I have, which specific makeup, which wigs, which shoes. That's so Probably. smart. Gosh, you're so So organized. And again, it doesn't help finding them. But if I know what I'm But you could write for, down where they are if you <laughs> yeah, want. You yeah, you know where you know that you have to find eight individually sculpted rings. But the can and go, oh no, I forgot the wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was like, oh actually these these rings all live in the same bag with all her other small accessories, so I know where all of them are all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I have to say, I don't have a lot of costumes that uh, hang easily um, in a closet or in a box. <laughs> so I have a shelf in my workroom of heads, which is only a little <laughs> decapitated animal head. Decapitated animal it's heads. It's your trophy room. <laughs> it's like my yeah, trophy room. Yeah, you just mount them, mount them on trophies and hang them on the mount well. Them on I I tried to do that, but I ran out of wall space because I was hanging pictures and and stuff like that. So. And like, she, I'm not quite sure what to do with because um, my daughter has fallen in love with her. Um, so she drags yeah, her beautiful unicorn. everywhere through the house and how this is still like, I mean, the horn is, I wish I had, I had known about earth magnets when I made this. Um, oh yeah, you could have just magneted it I on. I could have just magneted it on and it would have been so much better, but I didn't. I didn't know that. It's like my um, rollerblades for, for neon. The wheels just banged it on. But they weren't strong enough, so then I needed actual straps, too. <laughs> uh, any any questions in the comments from any of the viewers? Do you have any questions for this amazing group of cosplayers? Anyone, anyone, anyone? I don't Is see anyone in this call good at armor and troubleshooting armor? Because I have I have a piece it's of armor pieces. that <laughs> I have a piece of armor that has this stubborn crack down the middle that I can't seem to get rid of. You can't see it right now because it's spray painted. and I haven't put it on since it's spray painted. But once I put it on, this piece is going to crack again, and I don't know what to do about it. Could you reinforce the back of it? I haven't reinforced the back, so that's where the seam is in the in the foam. I could try, but I don't know. Like it doesn't quite fit. Right? <laughs> it's the main problem. That's really cool armor, though. That's mm -hmm. little, yeah, this is also for an affair demon. It's not. Mm. So it's cracking right through. It's not just like the paint is cracking. Yeah, like it's cracking right through the middle to the to the foam. Like I've reinforced um. this with like normal glue, hot glue, shoe goo, uh, silicone sealer. But I you didn't put like another piece it. of foam on the back that's like flat no, against where the weld is. I haven't. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think I can do another piece of foam, um, like maybe That's a piece fair. of cardboard or warbler, because um, it, it can't do foam because it's it's like yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't fit quite. Right. Like, if there's like nothing, if there's nothing stopping the bend, then it's still going to want to bend there because it's not part of its actual material. Yeah, uh, you, you could wa- put a wire there, um, to force it to make it the curve you want. Do you let us uh, one thing of warbler, and that might help. Yeah, I was thinking I do have some scraps of warbler from my last warbler project that I could try to put there. There's another one at the top here, but it's going to be covered by her. Um, her neck piece at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't have. I still have no idea how I'm going to do her neck piece. Okay, we have a question from uh, Ziggy Art, and she, anything you guys figured out on your own, and we're like, oh, me genius. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have any aha moments that you sort of stumbled upon? I went upon? to the costume store and got eyebrow wax. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Great. I had I a lovely, um, cheap kind of genius moment. Uh, I was working on a costume for mom from Umbrella Academy and her skirt is actually made of neoprene and so the seams make these really weird rounded shapes in it. I'm like, I'm not trying to find pink neoprene. I don't want to work with it. <laughs> so I made the skirt, big circle skirt, a twill and sewed uh, sort of pin tucks onto the inside where each of the seams would be and it turned out really nice in terms of giving it that sort of rounded shape that it's in where the seams should be. That's a neat idea. There, we get, we could also go into the like super overtired Lindsay story of, I know how I can make Katara's bathing suit. No, no, we, we don't need to share that paper. to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. Did it work? <laughs> Okay, to be fair, we were driving to a cottage, I was asleep, and I sometimes talk in my sleep, and I literally woke up and was like, I figured out how I can make Katara's bathing suit really easily, toilet paper, and then I fell asleep again. Yeah, it wasn't really a real... I mean, I would toilet that. paper has places in some cosplay, like, my Carlotta <laughs> wig is made out of toilet paper rolls. It's also a good medium for um, paper mache. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know I've that. I've been saving egg cartons for that. I've heard they work really well. Oh. It depends on what like you're going for. Um, and I also I, I don't do any special effects makeup, but I heard that like toilet paper is really good for like making scar. Yes, um, because you can. Yeah, like I've definitely texture. used it for burn effects. <laughs> so neat. I was like, we had a comment about uh, designing cosplay uh, for kids. Um, I have done a couple. I, I don't want to say they're cosplay costumes because we never actually, with the exception of two, we've never actually been to a con uh, with the kids because my kids are really little and it's been um, locked down for a silly amount of time. Um, but we pretty much just take pieces of clothing that fit them um, and then I lay it on whatever stretchy four-way stretch fabric I can find and trace the pattern and then sew them pants and shirts that are super stretchy so that when they decide that they want to take it off however which way um <laughs> and then everything is velcroed it's my uh i did yeah. my son uh wanted to do fierce deity link for for halloween this year um which has armor <laughs> and i'm like um okay something that because he wanted to take it to school he wanted to skate with it for his hockey less or his skating lessons um, so we made it all out of craft foam and sealed it, uh, and sewed on straps with Velcro so that he could take it off quickly, um, and that I didn't have to keep redoing it. Although I did not prime and seal the foam quite right because it kept cracking. Um, but white glue is a wonderful thing to fill in cracks. <laughs> yeah, I've done one costume for a kid, which is a Princess Zelda, so again, it's is designing it or redesigning it as close to shirt and pants yeah. or dress and pants as possible. And then all of Zelda's armor bits was just like gold fabric sewn on to the costume. Not, I was, we're not doing any armor <laughs> <laughs> on that one at all. It's just part of it. So it's, you know, two pieces. That's it. That's the costume. Put it on, take it off. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Oh, it's a book and go. Oh, oh no. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry guys for cutting us off. I wasn't paying attention to the time. Thank you so very much, um, guys, for coming and uh, chatting about your cosplays. They were, <laughs> they were, 
The G Jimmy didn't used to have um, a time end like that. Uh, yeah, surprise to, to send. Thank you so much, everyone.